always DIYs. So today's DIY, I am going to be working on um, this stack of charger plates that I showed you in my previous um, Goodwill haul. These are the Pier 1 charger plates. Um, these are only used for decorative purposes. You can't put food on these. Um, the um, disclaimer is on the back. Pier 1 imports for decorative use only. Do not, not for food use, may poison food. Do not use in microwave, dishwasher, or conventional ovens made in China. That's the disclaimer. So this is for decorative purposes only. Okay. So in my Goodwill haul, I told you I purchased eight of these for a dollar on Dollar Sunday at Goodwill. So for this DIY, I already did one so I can show you. Now, I am going to say this. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be the final color of um these chargers because i made my own paint and i made this paint using uh different types of paint so let me pull those out and show you okay so to make this color paint um i don't know if you can see it but at the bottom it's a different color because of the shimmer that i use so I used red paint, I used bright blue paint, I used this um, bright metallic um, red paint to add that shimmer to it, and I also used brown, and I am out of brown so I can't show you exactly how um, the color came about. Um, so again, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be... The final color of this because I did not take because I was just trying to create I did not take and write down exactly how much paint I use to make this but this is a maroon color okay so this is the first one that I've, I've done this is actually um, three coats of paint on here right now I'm going to leave the back gold I'm not going to paint the entire um, charger um, while I'm using these as chargers they're decorative items again you cannot put food on this um, but these are going to be chargers for my table arrangement okay so to step in to show you how I did this I mean everyone knows how to paint so that's pretty simple but all right so and also these chargers were already painted. I'm not exactly sure how it was done, but it has like a little pattern on it, like inside here. I don't know if you can see the pattern of how it was painted. And here you can see it looks like a square. Um, it looks like patchwork kind of paint, but it's a metallic paint. And underneath um, this metallic trying to see if I can find one where you can really see the color underneath um, maybe this one if you can see the color underneath right here they're actually yellow underneath which I was going to try to remove the gold because again I'm working with yellow in these upcoming DIYs that I'm doing but like I said I'm doing six of these um, for my table setting. My table setting is normally set up for four, um, but I'm going to do six for this DIY because I want to have a full table setting. So, without further ado, we're going to step in and I'm just going to show you how I did this particular. Okay, so for starters, I'm just taking a plain, simple rag and I took some alcohol and I put in here and I'm just cleaning the surface with some alcohol removing all the excess dirt from it and um, making sure it's dry before I add my paint. my paint and these charges are actually gorgeous they're beautiful I love the gold color of them but I already have gold chargers and um, 
I need a different color charger. And I did go online trying to find them, but you can't beat Pier 1 ceramic chargers, eight of them for a dollar. I'm not going to get a better deal than that. So even though I needed a particular color, we're going to DIY with that color. So um, I'm going to shake this up. And again, I'm not sure if this is going to be the final color of these chargers because I created this color on my own. So I'm going to keep this bottle and I'm going to attempt to make this color again because I actually like it. It came out really nice. It's kind of got a, like a purplish maroon color to it. Um, it looks different on the charger than it does in the bottle. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and step in. Now originally the first plate I actually used a brush on the edges. So I guess I'm going to go ahead back to doing that. I'm going to use the brush on the edges and then go in with the dabber in the middle because of the, the deep ridges here. So what I did, I just went around the edges and I just applied the paint and strokes going outward like so. Okay, I'm going to come around the side because you can't really see what I'm doing. So I just applied the paint one whole stroke around the edges from the inside to the outside all right trying to keep the strokes as light as possible again from the inside to the outside edge like so let me change this around so you can see I'm all in the frame of the shot so this over here very light strokes and if you you know because I'm doing the light strokes you're not going to see the paint you're going to see the paint strokes when it dries but it's just going to add a unique pattern to it and you don't want to you want to try not to get too many angles because of the actual pattern that it's going to give so it is going to look neat so you want to try to keep it as uniform and not too wide with your strokes. And I'm just dabbing the very edge of the brush as you can see. I'm not completely filling up my brush and I'm just spreading the paint. Okay, and then what I do um, when I'm done, I'm going to take and I'm just going to wrap my paintbrush in some plastic so it doesn't dry out because I don't want to keep washing out the paint because that's just a waste. So once you get that first coat of paint, this is what it's going to look like. So now that's with the uh, brush strokes with the using the paintbrush around the trim. And I had already tied this down. Um, this is a dabber that I was using, and I wrapped it in a plastic so I don't lose paint, it doesn't dry out. And then what I did, I just took the dabber, lightly dabbed it in the paint so it covers the bottom, and I just go on the inside and dab it around. You don't want to try to get it opaque at first because you're going to need extra layers but you want to try to get as much paint on there evenly filling in those ridges okay and then working into the center so you just keep going around in a circle I'm trying to see if I can get more of an angle I might have to lower this a little bit so bear with me the camera is going to move slightly because I want to get so you can actually see what it is that I'm doing. And this leg doesn't want to move. Alright, I hope that's a little better. 
so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm just going in a circle and I'm getting all of that paint out of the dabber because you want to try to get as much paint out of the dabber before you put it back in there. So, and you don't worry about because a lot of you I know when you use the dabber, if you push too hard, you get the little bubbles. Don't worry about those bubbles because they're going to dissipate. But if you like texture, okay, like some of the projects I've done, if you like texture, I do let those bubbles stay and I keep doing it so I get those bubbles in it because it gives it a, a little rough like texture on it. And depending on what type of project I'm doing, I, I you know, I look forward to the, to the texture of that. So, um, with this, like I said, now, if you want, you can put that back in there again. And if you want, you can actually go ahead and do the dabber. Now, with this effect, you apply more paint. Okay, so it's going to come out a little bit more opaque than it does with the brush. However, as you can see, I haven't covered that much area. Um, so, and I just go on and I add a little bit of paint and I get as much covered as I possibly can with the dabber. And like I said, you get a little bit more opaque where you don't have to do as much, but as you can see, I'm filling the dabber a lot more than I did the brush because the dabber applies a thicker coat to the area that you're painting, which gives it that opaque look. All right, so. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one off with the dabber, but I do wanna show you the difference in how it looks with the dabber and the paintbrush. So the top portion is with the dabber, the bottom portion is with the paintbrush. So with the paintbrush, you'll have to do more coats with the dabber. Honestly, you'll probably only have to do like two coats to achieve the um, the depth of you know your color or the, I guess the depth of the colors is what I'm saying. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up with the um, the dabber. And then I'm going to take the one I already did and we're going to do a little bit more to that so you can actually see what this project is going to look like. Okay, everyone, so I'm back. So I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> Excuse me. And I do apologize. I'm going to have a lot of coughing in this because I am getting over um a respiratory infection i had this respiratory infection when i did when i participated in the open collab um that's why i sounded the way i did in my introduction and it was so late when i did it was like three o'clock in the morning when i actually finished the video but um and pardon me my husband told me i had to eat so i apologize let me move that out of frame so um I'm a little stuck, okay? Without giving away too much of what I'm doing with this DIY, because of the particular theme that I'm going for, I don't want to make this too fancy, but I do want to have, I want it to have just a tad bit of bling. So I'm kind of stuck in between what I want to do or how I want to do it. Now, I showed you the colors that I'm working with, which is the maroon, the yellow, and I'm sorry, I can't get to it, the white, <laughs> and the black. These are the colors that are, and I'm also going to be going with, just to give it a little bit of glam to it, I'm also going to be doing some metallic gold in there as well so you're gonna have these five colors okay um 
So like I said, I'm a little stuck right now. So I'm, I'm going to figure it out. But these are the colors that I'm going with. And I don't want it to be too much glam. But I don't want it to be gaudy either. So, <coughs> excuse me. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do to the charger to give it a little bit more pop instead of it just being plain. I don't want the table setting to be plain, but I don't want it to be over glam either. So, I got to figure something out. I want it to be, like I, I, I said, it's going to be off the beaten path, way off the beaten path. Um, for my Christmas theme. Um, but it's going to be very fun. It's going to be so much fun. Um, I'm stuck. I'm really stuck. So I'm going to go off. I'm going to think about this. I'm going to eat my dinner. I'm going to think about this. And then I'll come back and show you what I've decided to do. Okay, so I'm back. So I decided what I'm going to do. Um, so... Initially, I said I was going to do a play setting for a six. And because I don't know how the portions that I use to make this color paint, I'm just going to go ahead with the four. I know I have enough um, paint to do four chargers. So, remember I said I was stuck, so I figured it out. I completely I for forgot I purchased this. This is called uh, Plasti Dip. M um... Metal metalizer. Oh, that was bad. Metalizer. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, my husband had went to a store called Ollie's. Is it Ollie's? Sweetie. Sweetie. Is it called Ollie's? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. It's called, yes, it's called Ollie's. So, he went to a store called Ollie's and they have all types of discount spray paint enamel paint all types of stuff so he found this is called plasti dip metalizer and it says create a metallic finish on plastic on plasti dip coated items um plasti dip is i don't even think i have any more of that but i have found this uh spray paint it's actually called plasti dip it is a paint that you can spray on they normally use it for automobiles tires or, or rims things like that and when you spray it on um, they have different colors you spray it on and it can peel off it actually turns into like a rubber type of stuff and you can peel it off so that's what this is is used for so you can get that paint spray it on something it'll give it like a rubber plastic type feel to it and then you can paint, uh, spray this over top of it to give it a metallic look. So what I did is, even though this is not plastic, it, I decided to utilize this. So this is in a, um, it's kind of like an iridescent color. So I'm not sure if you can see the letters. It's like that iridescent, all the different colors of it. So what I did is I took the charger that I had already finished painting and I did a light coat over it. Look at that. Beautiful. It's not too much. It's just enough. So it has like, you have this maroon with this gold sparkle to it. You guys can't really see the effect of it. Maybe, okay, you can see it right there. If you look really carefully the way the light reflects or the light hits it, you may be able to see it but it gave it like a shimmering gold finish over it which is fantastic okay so <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so with that being said like I said I didn't want it to be gaudy and initially I started to trim it with these I don't know if you can see them these are river rocks they're in a yellowish gold color. And I was actually going to take the river rocks and go around the edge of the charger like this. But I just felt that would be a little bit too gaudy. So when I remembered I had this and with that little 
gold sparkle glitter finish I decided to go ahead and trim it with these gold beads okay so it's not going to be too glam but it's not going to be gaudy so that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to go ahead um, I thought I was going to seal this with some Mod Podge <coughs> but I believe this is also kind of like a, a um, and it dries really quick because I really just did it before I started recording so I think I might add another coat to it, just a light coat. No, I think I'm going to leave it like this. This is perfect. Um, so I'm going to go over this with a coat of Mod Podge just to seal it. Um, I don't know if I want to do that because I actually like the finish. Um, hmm. I really got to give this some thought. Guys, when I tell you this is a day-by-day, -day, this is not a DIY um, thing that I can plan out. This is a day-by-day. -day. I'm coming up with ideas. I know what theme I'm going for and trying to get pieces to add for a tablescape and other items to decorate the home the Christmas tree is already set I already know what I'm doing with that that's a no-brainer it's just adding the pieces to it so like I said I'm not sure because this plate not a plate but this charger is going to be on the bottom so I'm not even sure if I want to add any Mod Podge to it I'm not sure but because I don't want it to take away the luster that it already has and I don't want it to add too much. I know I have a gloss, I have a satin, and I also have a matte um, Mod Podge. So, and I don't want anything to take away from what it already has. So I'm going to have to do little, like little tests on this before I do anything because I like the way it looks now. So, hmm. Let me, <coughs> looks here like some of the paint came up. I'm not sure. <coughs> excuse me okay so I'm stuck again so I'm going to pause this portion of the video I'm going to come back and I'll show you what I've decided to do with it okay so I'm back so I decided no Mod Podge and because I have foam um, um, foam that I can set in between my chargers so they don't get scratched or scuffed um, that's what I'm going to do because I actually like the finish of this. It is enough shine. It's not too much shine and it still has, even with that shine, it still has that matte look. And with that um, gold glitter dust that I put on there, this is absolutely gorgeous. I wish you guys could really see this. That's a better view of it. You can see that light dusting of the, the gold specks in it. It's just enough. So, what I'm going to do is, because I do want these to be semi-permanent, I'm going to take a little bit of E6000, and I'm going to brush around here, let it get tacky, and then I'm going to go ahead and trim it, like so. You guys can't see that. I'm going to trim it on the edges of the chargers with these gold uh, string beads. Alright, so with that being said, now I have to get something for my E6000. Okay. Gotta scoop that out. That got a little bit dry in there. Alright, so I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit E6000 out, grab some. <coughs> Alright, and then I'm just going to. You can't see on that side. I'm just going to smooth it right here on the edge right here. Okay, I'm just going to smooth it along. Let it get a little tacky so the beads will stick. So I'm going to do that, come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm back. 
and I just wanted to show you what the charger looks like and I think this came out absolutely gorgeous everyone as you can see I did the trim with the gold metallic gold beads around the edge just to add a little bit more glam to the maroon color with the sparkle in it I want to try to see if I can show you this sparkle all right maybe you can see it a little bit better now adjust this okay there you go I don't know if you can see that sparkle on there or the glitter but it's not it's just enough it's, there you go you should be able to see it I'm hoping you guys can see it because I'm really trying hard to let you see this <laughs> but um I think they came out absolutely gorgeous and yes I do know I have to invest in a crafting light but this is the finished product for my charger for my Christmas theme. Um, so I'm letting the other chargers dry. I already added the last coat of paint to them. I'm hoping the last color and I did have to reduce the number of chargers again because I made this paint mixture myself and I'm, I ran out. I have very little left in here and it's not enough to do six so I'm just going to do a setting for four but I think it came out absolutely gorgeous. So this is what your charger should look like if you're going to attempt this project, attempt this color, this is what it's going to look like. So this is a maroon or burgundy. Um, I say maroon because it's more of a brownish red than a wine red so this is a maroon charger with gold flex um in it and gold trim beading and uh like i said it came out absolutely gorgeous so i'm gonna let the other ones dry and um i'll show you what that finished uh product looks like but these i'm, I'm in love I'm, I'm actually in love with this um hand painted and, um, of course, added my own decor. That's what the DIY is. But I'm in love with this. And I'm looking at this, and even though I'm going for a particular theme for this Christmas, I'm looking at this color, and you can utilize this in your day-to-day -day, um, decor with this color. If you have these colors throughout your home, you can, you know, spruce it up for the holidays. If you want to do an elegant, um, elaborate uh, play, um, tablescape you can still use this even though my theme is off the beaten path for this Christmas um, these they're gonna be multi-purpose they're definitely gonna you can even use these for you know um, spring and summer tablescapes because of the color this color would go with pinks it will go with turquoise it will go with whites it will go with blacks there this color is very versatile so but for my off the beaten path um christmas decor this is what i'm going with but like i said this could be a multi-purpose piece um so again i'm going to go ahead and let these dry i'll come back and show you all of them completed and then we're going to move on to the next phase of this Christmas decor um, videos. And here is your completed project. This revamp slash upscale of Pier 1 charger plates was so easy and so simple and they came out absolutely gorgeous. If you are new to my channel, I want to take this time to ask that you hit that subscription button as well as that notification bell so you do not miss out on any of my future video uploads. It is always my pleasure to bring you my DIY projects as well as my home decor. I welcome you back and ask that you stop by again soon. We look forward to seeing you. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Joy's DIYs. Um, I ask that you like, share, and comment. Your comments are always welcome. Your suggestions are always welcome. Tell me what you would have done different, what you would have added, 
etc. Thank you once again.